Hi, I'm Nancy Allison Hay. I gave birth to my daughter, Sabrina Marie Slater, on April 3, 2005 at Inova Hospital in Fairfax, Virginia. She weighed seven pounds and four ounces at birth and was taken home from the hospital three days after birth. I breastfed Sabrina, or was trying to, to the best ability. In the second week of my daughter's life, her weight dropped to six pounds and 10 ounces. Not an unusual loss of weight, but then her weight plateaued and she was uh, slow to regain weight. But being a first time parent, I followed the instructions of my pediatrician who told me to supplement each breastfeeding with one ounce of formula. Being a first time parent, I, I followed that. It turned out he wasn't prescribing enough formula for her to gain the weight she needed. Uh, the pediatrician, uh, when he thought that her slow weight gain was a problem, sent me back to a different hospital from which she was born. He sent me to the Arlington Hospital Center on uh, George Mason Drive in Arlington. And uh, there we met Dr. Rispogi and a whole lot of other interns who were not friendly to us. They had a cold and detached manner, seemed to treat us as though we were guilty of something. I spent four days in that hospital with Sabrina, during which time I successfully was able to bring her weight up to what was expected. Um, in spite of the generally unfriendly um, service at the hospital, as my husband said, they just, they weren't helpful, the housekeeping, you know, they didn't empty the trash cans, they didn't take away dirty dishes or sweep the floor in a timely manner, and they just didn't come to help me with questions I had about being a new mother. And then it was that Dana Zemke from Arlington Child Protective Services interviewed me in the hospital. She got on the phone with my husband, said that people in the hospital had alleged that I was incompetent to raise a baby, that I was was starving Sabrina. She didn't say who these people were that made these allegations. And she forced us under mental duress to sign a safety plan before we could be released from the hospital, which we reluctantly did, but all the safety plan said was that we'd allow the home health nurses to come to our home and give us help with Sabrina. Um, that wasn't so bad, but, um, but then Ms. Zemke herself kept coming to the house every day, again, treating us as though we were guilty of something, um, invading our privacy, snooping through our medicine cabinets, pretty much criticizing everything we did, the type of laundry detergent we used, criticizing me for not uh, immediately getting Sabrina added to my health insurance, even though I had a 30-day grace period to do with that, and uh, continuously accusing me of being mentally deficient in some way, and asking me if I'd ever had psychological evaluations. And so on the third day of her visit, we just handed her a letter, and it wasn't hostile or anything. It was just saying, we have a right to our privacy. We want to consult with a lawyer before we have any more visits from you. And she retaliated against that by going straight to the judge and getting the removal order. And so then Sabrina was in foster care for for 18 months, and um, CPS and Judge Wiggins 
were against us right from the start. We knew that they wanted to find us guilty. They wanted to find us incompetent so that they could place our child for adoption with the foster couple, um, Steve Kaufman and his wife, Sandra Dolliner. And they eventually, they ruled on that, uh, the termination of our parental rights. We appealed that decision, but it was overturned on, in the next two levels. That's not unusual. Um, most appellate judges are hardly ever want to overturn a lower court's decision. They, they all band together. Also, there were two different guardian ad litems assigned to Sabrina. They pretty much worked against us the whole time trying